Hello and welcome back to our channel. Today we're installing our very first Powerwall 3 into this house just behind us. It's a very exciting day for us and we can't wait to take you along this journey. Today we're going to show you all the installation process, how we put it in, how we get around the problems that we may overcome and ultimately show you the finished product and what the product is capable of doing. As part of Tesla's launch for Powerwall 3, they've introduced this dolly for getting it on the wall. So it's actually a pretty cool invention. Um, basically it's got some Shimano brakes on it which allows you to control it quite easily and stop it to control the power wall. But at the back of it here, you attach a combi drill onto this, just a standard combi drill, and it attaches onto this spigot here. So when you spin the drill, the power wall goes onto the front of this and it lifts it up onto the bracket. So when you attach it to the bracket, so it'll be the front of the power wall it connects onto so it can go onto the back of the wall. So it sits on the bottom plate there, just like a normal trolley would. And then you use this drill to lift it up. So fast forward a couple of hours, we've got the power wall on the wall and we've got the conduit runs up and down the building for the cable. The power wall was originally going to go here, but because of the roots and the flex on the cable, we decided to put it in this location here, which is just fine. So we've got two cables here, the cable routes here that are going to come down. So one of them is a power cable that powers the actual power wall itself and communicates to it. One of them is an ethernet cable, so it can have direct connection to the internet. The other four, are the live and neutrals from the solar. And then you've got one more, which is the communication cable, the twisted pair, which allows it to communicate directly back to the Tesla gateway. We're in the loft now, bringing our cables down from above. So this is the DC cabling in now. So we've got two strings on this roof. So you've got four cables in total. So the Powerwall 3 comes with three MPPTs, which basically means you could have another solar string, another pair of these on a different roof aspect. But because this house faces east and west and the gable end faces true south, you won't have another opportunity on this house. But if you did have another one, you could add another array. Get the cables in now. Yeah. Because they're going to come up. So the power wall is made up of two components. You have the battery outside and you have the gateway inside. And the gateway is essentially the brains that tells the power wall what to do and when to do it in simple ways. This is the gateway here. This is the main box that controls everything from the power wall. And then you've got the trunk in here, which goes up through our bedroom cupboard and into the loft. This power wall is set up so that the whole house is on backup. So if we were to lose power to the grid, everything would be powered from this. So including the car charger, the heat pump, and all the plugs and sockets uh, throughout the building. So you've got the, all the cables coming back here and then the gateway is going to be wired in between the fuse board and the meter so that the cabling can power everything downstream of that when you lose power. 
So within the Powerwall 3, as you look at it, on the right hand side you've got the DC isolator which isolates the roof and the Powerwall 3. There's also a DC isolator in the loft. This is where, if it's DC coupled, all the DC cables come back to. In the middle you've got the main brain of the Powerwall 3 which is where the communication cables go between the gateway and the battery. In this Powerwall installation we've got 10 mil cable coming from the Powerwall gateway to the Powerwall battery and that allows for an 11.04 kilowatt output. On the cabling on the left hand side you'll see the black clamps, they're the ferrite cores and they're located in different locations throughout the battery to stop interference coming from the cabling to the components surrounding it. So we've got the cover on now for the battery, which is what keeps it sealed from the surrounding atmosphere and from water. All the screws down the side here along the top, they're all one-time use. So they have a gel inside them, so once you put them in, the gel seals around the screw to stop water getting in. And that allows the Powerwall 3 to have a water resistance up to two feet. So this whole thing is completely encased. This is all sealed as it comes in, so if or when there was a flood in this area, which is highly unlikely, but if it was, the battery would still maintain operation during that time. On the left hand side here, you've got the DC isolator. As you saw inside, this isolates the solar from the battery, so if we were to turn that off, this would isolate the cable between here and the DC isolators in the roof. And then there's another cable between those DC isolators and the solar panels themselves. On this side, we've got the rapid shutdown switch, which also acts as an AC isolator for the system. So for MCS, this isolates the system from the grid entirely. And it's just a simple on-off switch, which is lockable. Both the AC and the DC isolators are lockable. So for MCS purposes, this is absolutely fine. You can lock them off, you can keep them shut off. So if there is an emergency or if you need to keep them on, you can make sure that they're isolated safely. One thing that might actually look quite similar to Powerwall 2 and Powerwall 3 is that it's wall mounted, but in fact Powerwall 3 is actually floor mounted. So it is fixed to the wall like Powerwall 2 with a very similar bracket, which you can put onto the wall using the dolly as we showed earlier. But there's also two feet under here and back there, which allow you to level it and it holds the support of the Powerwall 3 when it's on the wall. The DC expansion kits as well, when they're released, this will allow storage to be added onto the Powerwall 3, but not capacity or output. They go behind the Powerwall 3, so the Powerwall 3 might even come out further and further and further, but each one is mounted on the floor. So you need to consider where you're putting it in terms of the flat area in front of it, if you want to future-proof it, if you want to add on more storage down the line, because the DC expansion kits have to be put behind the Powerwall 3, they can't go beside it. So when you're thinking about advancing the Powerwall 3 in terms of DC expansion, then you need to find another location for it if you don't have a flat ground like this. So to test the performance, we've come to the kitchen and we're going to turn on multiple appliances at once. But to make this even more of a challenge for Powerwall 3, we've completely disconnected from the grid. So the grid can't pull in whatsoever. And we've got the phone screen recording so you can see it all. And we've actually disconnected the solar. So we've turned off the DC isolator as well. So Everything that powers this right now, this whole house is running off grid. So if we turn on the induction hob first, we've got the air fryer, toaster and the kettle. And hopefully that will be enough to get to the limit. But if not, we'll find something else. So that's the induction hob on. We put the air fryer on. We put the kettle on and both sides of the toaster. That's drawing about 4.5. The apple will refresh in just a moment or so. So the app took a little bit of time just to update there, but we're now drawing 10.4 kilowatts completely off grid. All of these appliances are running. I put the microwave on as well. So the oven and the microwave are now both on. That's at 12.3 kilowatts from the house. Draw 14 kilowatts. So the battery is limiting itself what it can output now. So to summarize what happened there, because everything was on at one time, when the Powerwall 3 first got power draw from it, because it was such a high starting current, it took a few moments just to get itself going. But once it started, it got itself all the way up to 10 kilowatts. And the continuous rate of Powerwall 3 is 11.04, but the peak is 30 kilowatts. So it got all the way up to 14 kilowatts. And that was with all the induction hob running, 
the air fryer, the microwave, the oven, both toasters and the kettle running completely off grid with no solar out of a single box. That is pretty incredible if in my opinion. So to summarize the installation, it went really, really well. Much better than I expected because there are differences between Powerwall 2 and 3. And I think the way we've done the cabling with the white Copex and the white trunk and all the way up to the attic, it looks really, really neat. The product itself though is honestly blowing my expectations. I didn't expect it to be able to run all the appliances we had in the kitchen when completely off grid and with no solar connected to it at all. It's really, really impressive and out of a single box. There's nothing else on the market that can do that today out of a single box. And for the value for money, it is the single best battery storage product on the market today. If you are interested in it and want us to consider installing one for you, you can contact us at the Natural Energy Company or on 01382 543 375. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.